everybody welcome back to the channel I'm here to do my wrap up for April of all the books I've read you have to excuse me I've just got back from work I'm really hot I'm bothered I've got no makeup on I've got a stinking headache so I'm going to show you and talk about the books I read in the month of April I'm going to start with the one ebook I read just because my tablet's about to run out it's not a lot of on it but I read a book called Fathom by Jackie Black and this is the story um, it's set some like seven years I think it is I want to say is it maybe five five years just before the first world war after the sinking of the Titanic and it tells the story of this guy whose father appears to be killed in a motoring accident um, that is linked in some way to the sinking of Titanic and the whole story is about him investigating what happened and trying to find out why his father was killed um, there's this whole Titanic was replaced by Olympic conspiracy although at the end there is was she because um, there's something else that they put in there later um, yeah so it was all, all right um, let me just check I gave it I think I gave it three three stars for Fathom. It was enjoyable. It just took me a long time to get through. I'm finding that with ebooks. As much as I love them, they're taking me a while to get through. So, on to the next. I read Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Um, yeah, so gosh, it, was, it seems like years since I read this, but it was in fact only last month. So Nell, uh, Julie, Julie gets a, a call from her sister Nell. Nell's dead. They say she jumped. Did she or was she murdered? She's been obsessed with this thing called the um, the drowning pool in their hometown and writing the history of it to try and figure out what happened. Is it witches? Is it ghosts? Etc. Etc. Et it was really good actually. It was very, very gripping. It didn't take me long to read this one, I can tell you. I do find that with Paula Hawkins. She's very, very readable. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed that one. Stephen King of the month was Carrie. We all know the story of Carrie White, a girl who has telekinesis, is uh, lives uh, with her mother who's extremely religious um, and is tormented and bullied by her peel, peers. It all goes pot one night. She is invited out to the prom by a guy whose girlfriend asked him to do it because she actually wants to be nice to Carrie. She wants Carrie to have a nice prom and, and, and to, to enjoy and, and have some fun. Um, so her, mo her motives were really altruistic. However, while there, they decide to play a joke on Carrie. They vote her a prom queen. And as you know, she gets dumped with a lot of pig's blood on her and causes absolute mayhem. I think in the film, it ends with her setting fire to the, the school, but in the book, practically the whole town is raised, really nearly all the, all of the town. Really, really good. Classic Stephen King. <coughs> um, I read Karen's Law to the Good Daughter. Again, it seems like it was years since I read that, and I'm sure I've told you about them, but I haven't because these are April's books. So Charlotte and Samantha, as childhoods were destroyed by an attack on their family. Their mother was killed um, and their father was devastated. Um, Sam was injured very badly and moved away to New York because she, you know, doesn't want to be involved with that town anymore. Charlie's become a lawyer, although not a defence lawyer. She's... <laughs> Don't ask. Um, another different kind of lawyer, but they're both actually they both become lawyers but then there is a crime in the town a school shooting I think that's the one with the school shooting is it the one with the school shooting yeah it is and the girl that does the shooting just won't speak did she do it or was it somebody else um can they find out really good really gripping I do like Karen Slaughter again good read Meet Me in Hawaii by Georgia Toffolo. This tells the story of Marley, who's from Devon. After her brother is killed in, a, I think, a car crash, her parents close their surf school in Devon, which is a great place to surf, um, and basically their lives shut down. Marley uh, doesn't want to give up surfing, though her parents insist on it. Moves to Hawaii, where her uncle lives, running a surf school. And she goes to work for him. Here she meets a millionaire, Todd who takes underprivileged children um, abroad and to do things like learn to surf because he himself had a bad upbringing and obviously they fall in love. Um, 
yeah. But can she be reconciled with her parents? This one took me a while. Gave it three stars. It was still good. I gave Stephen King four and I gave the good the good daughter five. <coughs> Sometimes I find in romance is harder to read. I still like to read them because they're very easy to read, quick reads, so you don't have to worry about them. But I do find them, they can be a bit repetitive, a bit boring, there's always a happy ending and all this stuff. Francis Evesham's Murder at the Gorge. As you can tell, this was a three for five, or at the works. I like this one, it's got a picture of Clifton's suspension bridge on it. Because the murder can, the murder that the of the title actually um, takes place in, at, uh, in the uh, Lee Woods, uh, which is on above the gorge at Clifton, sorry I can't get my words out, uh, in Clifton in Bristol. This is sent in, in the uh, fictional town of Exxon Sea just a few miles down the road because Bristol is quite close to the coast and um, this person turns up dead. Um, local people are targeted with nursery rhymes and this person that turns out dead is from the town. So they've got to find out who it is is sending the nursery rhymes and why and can they stop any further murders from happening. It's really good. Libby Forrest is a baker, chocolatier and a bit of a private eye as well in her spare time. So she's a bit of everything. But yeah, I actually enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. Did help that uh, there was a lot of Bristol in it. <coughs> The classic of the month was The Modern Classic 1984 by George Orwell. The first time I've read this, it made me very sad, actually. It made me very sad. Um, just the story of this guy, Winston Smith, who rewrites the past to suit the narrative of Big Brother. He knows the only way it's ever going to stop is if the proletarians, the basically the common people, rise up, but he knows they'll never do because every time someone looks like they might, Big Brother comes out and, well, makes them disappear. Um, he falls in love with a girl named Julia and they have an affair which is against the rules um, and when it's discovered all hell breaks loose and his life changes forever. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it but it scared me, it made me feel very sad, it made me feel hopeless and I, you know, maybe that's the point of it but I'm glad I read it, it's a, it's a, it is a good book. And that one, we're going to go four stars too. A lot of four stars this month. Oh, sorry, I got got a bit of a cough and a cold again. I'll go along with a headache. Jennifer's been keeping me awake at night, so I'm probably a bit run down. Peter May, Extraordinary People. This is one of the books that Paul and Jennifer gave me for Mother's Day. And I'm going to read a second one this month, if I get a chance. So this tells the story of Enzo McLeod, who he teaches <coughs> at a university but he used to be into forensic science and he is asked to look into the death or to the disappearance of a man who died something like seven to ten years ago nobody was ever found he was a writer he was a member of the ministry and Enzo McLeod and uh, an assistant that he hires because he meant to get her a job at the university and didn't. Or oh, the hospital didn't, I can't remember which. Uh, he gives her a job as his assistant, helping him research. And they travel across France, um, trying to locate the body parts of this missing man. They discover his head first, and then they got to go around and solve the crime. It was really good. Again, again I gave it four stars. I love Peter May's book. He's a really good writer. I, I, you know, I'm glad I've got these. These are going to be going into the permanent collection. <coughs> Some of them will be going to my mum. In fact, other than, yeah, most of them will actually. Next, I read The X-Hex, which again is one from the works. This is one that's been big on TikTok. Um, basically... This girl breaks up with the rich boy in town, who's towns of the founders, and she puts a curse on him, not thinking that it was going to be a real curse. It is. He comes back years later, and everything is going wrong with all the magic in this town, um, and not just with Reese. It's all the town is having problems. So 
if it was just him it wouldn't be so bad but it's affecting toy uh, there's murderous wind up toys and outraged ghost and a talkative cat so they have to work together and try and save the town and Reese's life but not only that of course they fall in love again ah which apparently they never fell out of it's one of those so that one got a four star it was it was good I make it sound like it wasn't and I'm rushing through them because I don't want a long video I've got enough but I wrote read 18 books in April <coughs> I've slowed down a bit so far in May because I'm reading a long one that's a Marilyn one and it's it's not one of my favorites but it's part of my reread Harlan Coburn played dead. This is the first book Harlan Coburn read. It, it, it's very padded. They, they, he could have got rid of some of it. It wasn't all necessary. So this ex-fashion model and businesswoman marries the man of her dreams. A sports superstar. On their honeymoon he disappears and uh, is dead. Or is he? So they do recover a body that they say is David's but it's so uh, destroyed that it's done via dental records which of course can be faked and then she discovers a conspiracy of him perhaps being murdered or faking his own death there was this whole subplot of his horrible brother coming into it and trying to seduce her and just for the sake of wanting to say he'd had the same woman his brother had because he's better than him even though he's a waste of time that whole subplot could have been removed it wouldn't have really mattered um but it was a bit that that's the only thing with it. it it let it down a bit so it got a three stars he's come this like i said this was his very first book so for a first book it's really good but his later works are a lot better but still still worth a read the next one's just a photographic book um which i picked up and i thought do you know what? i want to look at that and read the quotes it's called from cornwall with love Photographs are by Bob Croxford and it contains quotes from authors and poets about the area and it is literally just this really slim volume of photographs of the wonderful Cornwall, a place I love very much, um, been to several times, lived in for a while when I was a lot younger. Let's see if I can find another picture I really adore, adore, adore. the whole of Cornwall to me is oh, oh dear, it's just not fair, I wish I was there now actually. Let me just find more. Oh. Sorry, I'm I'm ooing over the photographs again. I'm gonna take this to, to my mum so she can have a look through the pictures. Here we go. Where's that? So there's St Ives. St Ives is alright. It's not my favourite, but the ph photographs are absolutely gorgeous. So that got a four stars just because the photographs are so beautiful. Like I said, there's quotes from various people in it. So for instance, that's far too long. I want a short one. Um, so Virginia Woolf said. How I wish you were here, as only the Cornish see its stupendous merits. <laughs> After that, I read a book that's been on my TBR for at least five years, physically as well. It's been it's one of the ones on the top of the cupboard. Uh, I've got two bookcases full of Marilyn books, and on top of that, there's tons and tons of books, which is my main TBR that I'm trying to get down a bit without putting too many new books on. It's not working. <laughs> it's not working. The Lightning Strike Heart by TJ Clune. Again, TJ Clune is quite big, big on uh, TikTok at the moment with The House from the Cerulean Sea and, and the other one. Uh, this is one of his earlier books. My friend Julie recommended this to me absolutely long ago and I started reading it and I just could not get into it. And I'll be honest, I couldn't. I was like, nah, nah, this ain't for me. I picked this up thinking I'm going to try it again and this time I absolutely loved it. So I obviously needed a little bit more time to get into the zone. Basically, it tells the story of a guy, a boy named Sam, who discovers he's got a lot of magical powers. Um, basically, he turns a load of bullies to stone as they corner him. And the king's magician, uh, king's wizard, comes out and says, right, you're going to be my apprentice. You're going to be the next king's wizard. Um, so he, when he's 14, as a trainee, he enters the Dark Woods, a big part of the story of the Dark Woods, and arrives back home with Gary the hornless gay unicorn and a half giant named Tiggy. Now who doesn't need a gay unicorn in their lives because I totally need one. He is so funny. I love Gary. He's my favourite character. There is a knight in here called Ryan Foxheart who Sam is desperately in love with but uh, knight Ryan Foxheart is betrothed to the prince who 
Sam doesn't like. However, the prince is kidnapped by a dragon and flown away. And then Sam and Ryan and Tiggy have to go and rescue Prince Justin. They bring back the dragon whose name is Kevin as well. But now there's a whole great scary subplot of a romance between Gary the Unicorn and Kevin the Dragon and it totally works. I loved it. I gave it I gave it four stars and I want the sequel. There is a sequel. In fact there's several in this series. I'm gonna get the next one soon, I hope. Because I absolutely adored it and I'm I'm so glad I gave it another guy a go and just didn't think I'm just gonna give it away. I'm so glad I actually sat down and read it. It's not one I'd give to my mum, there's too much sex in it, it's too much spicy. Too much gay spicy for my mum. She is 78. But for me it's just about the right amount of gay spice. I enjoyed it, it was absolutely fantastic. So if you haven't read it, do read it. It is very, very funny. I laughed out loud. Next is book 13 in the Chronicles of St Mary's by Jodie Taylor. As you know, I love Jodie Taylor and I love the Chronicles of St Mary's. I have all the books. I don't have all the, the Time Police ones. I, there's two I've got to get. They're on my list. They will be arriving at some point soon, hopefully. Probably when I need a Jodie Taylor fix. So far, Max has taken a job in an office because they are a historical institution much like St Mary's who take too much of an interest in the past for their own gains which St Mary's doesn't and they've attacked Max and the guys at the house Penny Royal, Stanhope and all that lot so she they go to this time and she and Markham and she gets a job and Markham stays at home and looks after the house like the good husband he should be <laughs> I'm just joking and basically they find out what they're up to and it all involves Magna Carta and the gunpowder plot and so on. But Max has a bit of a problem in the fact that she has had so many jumps and she's been in so many different time streams and time periods that she doesn't know, her, her body doesn't know where it belongs anymore. She needs a break from the jumps and time travel. Um, so she'll walk into a wall that isn't, a wall that shouldn't be there but it is so she'll walk into a wall because there used to be a door there and she's been to that place in the past like at St Mary's or she'll start seeing things from the past like the Jack the Ripper episode that was in one of the earlier books oh, I'm gonna have to do a complete reread aren't I oh that's terrible and and so on so she's also trying to catch up with Matthew and her husband Leon and it, it's it's oh absolutely brilliant these books are getting thicker every time she does one but they are so good if you have not read any of the Chronicles of St Mary's please do these are the best books I love them she's on a par with Terry Pratchett for me she is you know the next in line to the throne after Mr Pratchett because I loved him so much so yeah I thought this was a five a five stars Zed what are you doing the cat is climbing over the bedside table trying to drink my cola. Then we've got, talking of Terry Pratchett, um, the Terry Pratchett reread continues with Mort. This is the Isis large print edition because this is the only hardback I could get back in the 90s when I started collecting them and I wanted them all in hardback. She's gonna knock my pens flying out. Get down Zed. Zed, get down. Thank you. So Mort tells the story of uh, a teenager who becomes apprentice to death uh, but he's not that good at it. He can't separate his emotions because he's so human, obviously. Um, Princess Kelly is due to be assassinated. He doesn't think she should be because she's only 16. So he stops the assassination, but time doesn't like that. So it's trying to uh, change back to the way it should be. And it will do unless he can stop it. But also in stopping it, he stopped what has to happen from happening, which is the joining of the lands um, and, and Stolat. Death has delegated all of his work to Mort, who is doing it with the help of Albert, his, uh, ha his um, cook and valet, and daughter, daughter, it's not his daughter, Isabel, who was orphaned and he took her in. Um, they are doing the duty while death is becoming more human and trying to find out what fun it is and Mort is becoming more like death so they're 
they're swapping places. As it says, Mort meanwhile is becoming much less cheery and showing a worrying tendency to speak in hollow capitals. So, so yeah, it's a four star for me. It's not my favourite. It's one of the earliest. I think it's book five, book four, book five. The, 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 I think Weird Sisters might be next and the, the, then it really gets into its uh, stride. But I still love them all. Uh, I'm looking at it and I'm just thinking of happy times reading this and when I discovered it back in the 90s at drama school or just after I finished drama school with my boyfriend whose also name was Paul yeah I got a thing for Paul's um he got me into them and we collected them all together and it was a religious thing that we would go and get them when they came out and we'd get the audio cassettes uh, or audio books on cassette and listen to them at night. They'd, I, I mean, I would just go to sleep listening to Terry Pratchett. I still could because I've got some of them on my on my uh, Audible, but I, I just don't at the moment. Anyway, yeah, that's enough gushing over Mr. Pratchett. Carol Matthews, the Chocolate Lovers Club. I have read one of these, but not this one. It's one of the ones later in the series because I was thinking, I recognise this character. It was one particular character, which was Autumn. So Lucy is going out with a guy named Marcus, but he is a cheating little git. Um, they split up and they get together and they split up again and so on. And her and her friends, Autumn, Nadia and Chantal, form the Chocolate Lovers Club. And whenever they're a crisis, they meet in a place called Chocolate Heaven, which is a little cafe. And they just, you know, things happen you know in life so uh Chantal is very rich but her husband doesn't want to touch her for some reason so she goes off having uh, sex with all sorts of strange people and gets herself into all sorts of sticky situations especially when all this stuff gets stolen um Nadia's husband has got a gambling addiction and he's gambling all the money away while she's desperately trying to stop him and she cancels the internet and stuff like that but he works his way around it and in the end she leaves him and Autumn actually Autumn's not too bad but she has a problem with her brother Richard who's a drug addict and she works in drug rehabilitation funnily enough and he comes to stay with her and all sorts of have breaks loose so yeah, it, it, I really enjoyed this because I know where it sort of goes, but I can't really remember it, so I'll probably redo a reread on whichever one that is I've read. Again, I gave this one three stars. It did take me a while to get through it because it is quite long, but still, it's a nice, light-hearted read, and and the characters are likable enough. The next book I have got a, a review, a very very short review of, of what I thought of it, um, and it is *The Radium Girls* by Kate Moore. So this is a non-fiction book. You know, I do love my non-fiction, and I think I'm more into non-fiction at the moment than I am fiction. Um, you wouldn't know it to look at it because I read so much fiction, but I've got I've got a few non-fiction books to get through. And I'm looking forward to them. So The Radium Girls tells the story of these women in the early part of the 20th century who used to work in um, what was called a dial painting factory, and they would work long hours, and the girls were, in some cases, as young as 11 because their hands were steadier, painting luminous dials, so luminous hands, luminous numbers on watch faces for people in the dark. This was especially relevant during the First World War with the soldiers being in the trenches. So the problem was the luminous substance, which was amazingly termed and called undark, was made from radium, which of course is radioactive, was discovered by Marie Curie. Um, she termed it my beautiful radium and of course it's poisonous. The girls were told it was perfectly safe um, to use, that it wouldn't harm them in any way, that the doses were so small it wouldn't touch them, but they were encouraged by the foreman and the managers to do something called lip pointing, which is where they take their camel head brush, very fine brush, and uh, dip it in the paint and then lick it to make a fine point or to lick it then dip and then paint to make a very fine point with the paint so of course every time they did that they were ingesting it they were also told it wouldn't hurt them they would go home glowing they were also called the, one of the things that were called the shining girls or the ghost girls because this stuff would make them glow in the dark and they would paint their eyes eyebrows with it and their teeth um wear their best clothes so that when they went out they would shine in the darkness all the time being told it won't hurt you it's perfectly safe don't worry and then of course these girls start getting sick and dying and this tells that story and also the story of the 
the fight for justice and compensation that they they made in the and it went on until 1939 the fight for justice it this is they are the reason why we do have now such stringent health and safety rules it's part of the reason these are the people that, that got it in place and we we should thank them for that because they the, basically their bosses put profits above people and there are companies that still do that but it's not as bad so yeah the rating goes I recommend I gave it five stars I couldn't put it down I was just so gripped by their story it's so sad there is a film based on the book I do want to check that out at some point we've got two more to go next is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelades now again this is one that's been all over TikTok uh, and it's about this girl named Delicia Berenson who was an artist until one day, six years in the past, she shot her husband in the head five times. He was a famous photographer. Since that day, she hasn't spoken a word. Our main protagonist, Theo, is a psychoanalyst, psych psychotherapist, and he gets a job at the hospital she's in, thinking he can bring her back and get her to speak. Uh, so the story takes us through uh, his struggle to get her to speak, his life with his wife, um, and we see Alicia and her husband and what happened. There is a huge twist at the end. I, I gotta be honest, I didn't actually see that coming. I'm normally pretty good at picking up twists, but I didn't. And it's because of the way it's written. It's so cleverly written. I got to admit, I, excuse me, Zed. Again, I gave it four stars. But it the, it was so it was very close to being a five star read so so close I would say more of a four and a half than a five, um, but, oh my god it was so the way it's written and we get to the twist I mean I was I got to the twist I was like hey but and then I thought about the way the book was written and I thought oh I see that makes sense now so good I do recommend this one to pick up. The last one um, I only gave two stars to, and it is a Marilyn related book. It's called Beauty Mark. I like the cover. Um, a verse novel of Marilyn Monroe by Carol Boston Weatherford. Now, I gave it two stars because verse poetry biography stuff is very hard to read. And when you know as much about the subject as I do, it's extremely hard to read, especially when there's a few mistakes in it. There are a few timeline mistakes, a few errors. So that makes it very, very hard for me to give it any more than a two stars. But the, beaut the format of the book is gorgeous. The cover is stunning. Underneath, although it's plain black, it does have a little quote on there from it. Nobody knows how it feels inside my trouble mind. No one wants to. That's not strictly true because we do care about her, even now, 60 years after her death, which it will be in August. So those are the 18 books I read in the month of April. How did I do? What do you think? Have you read any of these? If so, what are your favourites? Have I encouraged you to pick up any of them? If so, let me know down in the comments below and I hope to get back to normal programming soon as soon as I get Jennifer sorted out because normally my filming is at night. I'm doing this in the afternoon when she's at school. I don't normally do this now, this is usually time I use for running my eBay business, but I'm I'm just trying to get caught up with the videos. I normally do it at the night when she's in bed. She's going through a very clingy phase where she does not want to go to bed unless I'm with her. <clears throat> so of course I can't film in the evenings. So yeah, I will try and get to uh, do some more filming very, very soon. But I hope to see you soon, guys. I miss making videos for you and I'm loving doing the reading thing as well as the colouring. So I'm going to have to excuse me because I'm going to start coughing. I will see you in the next video as soon as I can. Bye, everyone.